And we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all the hearts are open, all the desires known, and God whom the secrets are hidden, meant the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Before we say the words together, a moment of quiet for us just to reflect on what we might like to confess to God this morning. And we say to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And collect for All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So here the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 5 beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you're old enough to remember these words, whether you sang them in Sunday school. I am not old enough to remember them. <laughs> Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Anyone remember singing that? Yes. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. You're much older than I thought you were. <coughs> well, it was a hymn that our forebears, our ancestors, used to sing in the good old days. It's gone out of fashion now, hasn't it? You won't find that on the average worship CD these days. But the principle it promotes is an extremely good one. To regularly thank God for all the ways in which God blesses us is a very healthy and a very positive practice. And I wonder if we were to ask, if we were to ask people at random this morning to make a list of the ways in which they thought God had blessed them or was blessing them, I expect they would come up with things rather like this. You know, I would, I would say, I'm blessed that I have enough food to eat every day, to have clean water piped into my house, to have a warm, rainproof house, to have a loving family around us and good friends to look after us, maybe to be successful at work, maybe having enough money to live on, maybe more than enough money to live on, uh, having freedom to worship on a Sunday morning when we're allowed to by the government. But that's, generally speaking, true. And these things are all indeed really wonderful blessings to remind ourselves of frequently. So why am I saying all this? Well, in our Gospel reading this morning, which we just heard from Matthew chapter 5, Jesus also makes a list of the different ways in which we might feel blessed. But his list takes, on, takes the concept of blessings to a whole new level. His list, of course, uh, is known as the Beatitudes. Uh, Beatitudes simply means blessing. And there are nine of them in total. And they're quite varied in scope. But I doubt if any of them would get onto the average person's list of blessings that we talked about earlier, just now. How many people would see being humble or being humbled as being a blessing? Probably not that many. How many people would see being meek as a blessing? Very few, I suspect. How many people would see being persecuted as a blessing? Hardly any, I would imagine. How many people would see mourning some kind of loss, whether it be a loved one or something else that's been lost, like a job or health or youth? How many would see mourning as a kind of blessing? Many situations or experiences that we might naturally seek to avoid, Jesus seems to be calling blessings. And many situations or experiences we might find challenging, like being pure in heart, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, showing mercy, being a peacemaker, Jesus calls all these things blessings as well. And it seems to me that he is trying to make a very serious point here. And I think that what Jesus is trying to say to his disciples and to the crowds, and also to us here this morning, is that it's not necessarily in places of strength or success that we are particularly blessed, but in places of weakness and vulnerability. We could know God's blessing at all times, obviously, but Jesus seems to be saying that God shows up in our lives and blesses us, especially at times when things are not going quite so well. In the difficult times, when God seems, to begin with at least, quite distant or even absent. And that runs contrary to what we as human beings naturally believe. 
But I think if we're honest, many of us would agree that it's the hard times that we've known in those hard times that God is often closest to us. It's like this, isn't it? God promises not to remove our grief, but rather to transform it. As we see in the resurrected Christ, the promise that God's love is more powerful than death. God doesn't remove us from situations of persecution, however that may manifest itself, but comes alongside us to provide strength and support. Similarly, in our world, where an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is the prevailing philosophy very often, showing mercy in just small ways can bring God's blessing. As can working for justice in a world where there's much injustice or endeavouring to bring peace to situations of conflict. And when you think about it, Jesus himself is a good example of what it means to be truly blessed in, this, in the way he's describing here. The God we know in Jesus always shows up where we least expect God to be, in a crude, filthy manger in a dirty stable, rather than in a jewelled crib in a palace. Among the poor, the sick and the destitute, rather than with the rich and the powerful. And on the cross of a bandit, rather than astride of war horse of a conquering hero. And I think this message of God bringing blessing in unexpected and unpromising situations is a very relevant one for us at the moment. Because as you know, as we know sadly, it looks like we're heading for another period, a uh, difficult period of lockdown with all the problems the sacrifices and the hardships that will be involved in that. We're going to have to steel ourselves once again to hear news of more hospitalisations and deaths and more problems of loneliness, not to mention job losses and financial difficulties. We're probably going to be feeling, if we're not careful, rather gloomy. We're going to be feeling probably quite weak and at times quite vulnerable. But the Beatitudes of Matthew 5 teach us that it's in times like this that we can know the presence of God in very special ways. And we need to sort of bear that in mind as we go into these next few weeks. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. We need to remember that blessings are much wider than perhaps some of the things we would automatically put down on our list to begin with. And as we progress through the next month, uh, let's not get too depressed or anxious or fearful. But let's rather look out for opportunities to experience God's blessing. If Jesus was here in the flesh this morning, maybe he might add a tenth beatitude to the list. And that's the one I'm going to finish with. Blessed are those who are locked down, for they shall know the presence of God. Blessed are those who are locked down, for they shall know the presence of God. The world in general would think that's absolute nonsense, but we as Christians know that with God, things are often the reverse of what we expect. And maybe, just maybe, over the next month, we are going to experience something new about the presence of God in our lives. Shall we just be quiet for a few moments? Just to reflect on those words of Jesus, not necessarily my made up attitude, but the ones that are actually on the pages of the Bible, and maybe just ask God to help us to be open to receive his blessings in times of difficulty. Trust in God the Father. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in His Son Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the 
sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, as we move into another period of lockdown, we pray for our nation and its people. We pray this morning for those who, when they heard the news yesterday, felt anxious, fearful, or depressed at the thoughts of what may lie ahead. We pray for those who are nervous that they will be lonely. We pray for people who have lost jobs and livelihoods and fear that that may happen to them in the future. We pray for our government, for our Prime Minister and his advisers. And we pray for all who work in the National Health Service as they prepare for potentially difficult times ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Looking further afield, we pray for the United States as they uh, elect their president on Tuesday. Pray for the two candidates and all who have yet to vote. Pray that there will be uh, a peaceful process without violence. And we ask you to uh, ensure that your will is done, whichever person is to be elected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Greece and Turkey following the earthquake on Friday. Pray for those who have lost loved ones, whose homes have been destroyed. We pray also for the people of the Philippines as they brace themselves for the tropical cyclone which is passing over them today. We pray for organisations who are doing their best to help people in need in these places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Following the tragic death of four migrants crossing the channel last week, we pray for all refugees who are fleeing war-torn countries or places where they are unable to live for any reason and making dangerous journeys to other parts of the world, wherever that may be. We pray for safety for them, for justice for them, and for those who have to make decisions concerning them, we pray for the wisdom of God to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and our families and friends and in the moment of quiet now, we bring to God any known to us who are in need this morning and need the touch of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this feast of All Saints Day today, we thank God this morning for the life and the witness of all those who have gone before us in the faith, particularly those who have worshipped in this church over many centuries, but especially those who have worshipped here who, who we have known and loved and have now gone to be in the presence of God. We thank you for their life and for their witness, and we remember them with thanks this morning. O oh, blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Hallelujah. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we now come to the peace. We are the body of Christ, by the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Therefore we just give thanks for all that means to us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As, as, as 
is our custom now. We just give a brief wave to each other. Or a long wave if you want. So if you'd like to just keep a moment of silence while I prepare the table for the communion. through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, was seen on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these, your gifts of bread and wine, may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of all men, rejoicing at his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We bring before you this bread and this cup. We pray you to accept this our duty and service, a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through him from whom all good things come, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So now we pray as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
So I will now come round and uh, distribute the bread to those who wish to receive it. If you'd rather not, I will just say a short prayer of blessing over you.
We say together a prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for healing us through the body and blood of the Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a new sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Okay, before we have our closing hymn, um, I wonder if any of the children have been doing any of the stuff they were given when they came in. Not to show us here. Tell you what, why don't you stand on the pew? <laughs> well, stand up so we can actually see it, okay? Well done, yes. Anybody others? Oh, that's a medal, that's, that's important, technically, that one. Uh, but who are these people on these bits of paper? Do you know? Have a guess. What's one word you might use for them? Well, I can't, I can't see. Jesus.